And I realized at the age of 32, something was wrong. And I realized that I had processed the world in a very dysfunctional way for all those years when I played golf, when I was super competitive, that I wanted the best of myself. And I pushed myself in weight training and running and ran a marathon when I was 26 years old. I did it all and I wanted to take on the world in New York City. And so it took a long time to figure out what the heck was wrong. And ultimately my breathing became the key to finding function in my body, function in my movement, function with my breath. So I became an optimal human being that could hold myself upright. Hey, it's Nick Armstrong, and you are watching the Founded in FOCO podcast. Every episode, we get a chance to talk to somebody who's doing cool, innovative, and unique things in our community. And today, we've got Joe Samodi. Joe, tell us about your business. Thank you so much for having me, Nick. Um, I am a mental performance coach for college athletes primarily, but I also work with corporate America um, and helping them become more conscious of their everyday breathing, improving their everyday breathing patterns. So when you think about the kind of stimulation that we're living in in the outer world today, so much coming at you, so much to process, so much to absorb, so much to manage. And part of what we're not seeing as humans participating in this wonderful experience of life is that our breathing is taking a big hit. And so our performance, our ability to be where we want to be and do the best that we possibly can do is not being accentuated, it's not being heightened, it's not being highlighted. The best of you isn't coming forward. So the best of you actually comes forward when your breathing is optimal, when it's healthy, when it's functional. And that takes training. That actually takes a conscious effort to learn how to improve your everyday breathing so that your breathing supports the state of mind that you want to be in. It allows you to focus. It allows you to go into flow states. It allows you to be able to even be creative where you never thought you were creative before. Your breath affects every part of you, mind and body. There isn't a part of the breath that doesn't get entangled in the systems. So we want to be more conscious of our breathing, not just to turn it on and off and turn on the app and then turn off the app and then forget about our breathing. It's really about keeping the breathing a part of your everyday life, keeping it conscious and then using it harness its abilities so that you can train it to do what it needs to do. And everyday breathing is soft, it's gentle, it's light, it's effortless, it's invisible. Good breathing, healthy breathing is not upper chest breathing, it's not hard and heavy breathing, it's not mouth breathing, it's nose breathing, it's slow breathing, it's deep and lo uh, low breathing into the abdominal and navel area. So we try to train ourselves to get to that place where you're able to use the breath, train it to be functional everyday breathing, and then you can focus, concentrate, find flow states, and be more resilient in this world. What I've heard you say is, um, it, it goes far beyond what a, a traditional app, right? We've all heard of Calm, like 10% Happier, some of those other, like the Apple Fitness has the meditation stuff in it to like bring you back into, uh, kind of a de-stressed state if you can get there these days. Um, but what you're saying is the training of of how to mindfully breathe and how to bring yourself into a flow state and how to make that a, not just a like an instinctual thing, but a, a, a trained skill that that's a thing that you can do? Yes. So what we're finding is in a lot, and I'm, personally, as a human watching people breathe, we're finding that people breathe primarily through the mouth, chest, heavy, shallow. And why they're breathing that way is because of life, because the way we hold ourselves, the way we're standing, the way we are operating as we move around the world, the way that we are taking in stimulation with our five senses, it's a lot. And I think part of the conversation is let's acknowledge that we have a level of stress that's really hard to manage and that an app where you turn it on and off isn't enough for the management of all that's coming at you, especially if you have kids and you run a business and you're trying to do it all and be all in this life. Your breathing is the, is the thing that goes, is the current underneath you. It's, it's ebbing and flowing and it's telling the story. It's the narrator 
of your body mind, it's actually impacting so much of how you see and absorb the world. So there is a functional everyday breath that we can achieve. That's light, that's soft, that's subtle, that's effortless, that's invisible, that's not through the mouth, it's through the nose, and it's not through the chest, but it's deep down into the navel. And these habits become a part of your existence, and then it allows you to be more resilient. It allows you to find flow states. It allows you to perform better. It allow, And this is exactly why I work with athletes, because they want the best of themselves. They want to achieve the most, and they can't do that when their breathing is dysfunctional. Athletes is the primary uh, audience for you. What happens for somebody who's in the corporate world? Do, do, do they have the same skill set as a different type of, of lessons? Because um, I'm, I'm imagining like an athlete who's prepping to go to a game and, and do a performance. Uh, it, it's the same thing as a, a corporate, you know, a CEO or a, a manager who's going in and getting ready to like pump up their team for a first quarter sales meeting or something like that. Mentally, they're probably in similar spaces. Is that true? Or do you find that one audience is you know easier to work with than the other? <laughs> I mean, we're humans, right? So we're 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 working on a level, whether it be physically on a field or it's in an office, we're working at a level of optimal. We want to be able to handle the life that we're living. We want to be able to handle the traffic, handle the surprises of life. And we want to be able to surprise ourselves. We want to be able to over, you know, reach to new spaces, be creative, have discoveries. Um, and I think in terms of the office, um, think about all the things that come at you, even if you're not in a physical office, but you're still absorbing a lot of the stimulation from all the different apps that you're trying to manage, all the email, all the text, all the different sources. It's very difficult. The mind is being asked to do and function at a very high level these days, given the amount of sources that we're trying to keep track of, the data, the facts, the information that you're trying to absorb every single day. All I'm saying to you is that fatigue and stress is such a major management in our life that your breathing, if you're just turning it on and off with an app, isn't going to teach you that. It may help you downregulate for a moment, but you may be taking your dysfunctional breathing into the app. You may actually be making it worse because you're not taking the knowledge and the intelligence of good breathing into the app, into your mindful meditation practice. In other words, we can't just be soft and allow breathing just to exist because it's there in the background 20,000 plus times a day. And we just sort of think, oh, it's, you know, I'll just take it for granted. What I'm saying is, why don't we pump it up? Why don't we put it forward? Why don't we make the diaphragm one of the most important muscles in your body that you can train to become stronger and more intelligent? Yeah, so it sounds like what you're talking about is the, the power of tiny shifts, right? The idea that you can do the things that you do every day, but if you do them just a little bit better or more efficiently or do them, you know, slightly in a you know a healthier way or whatever it is, you know, having having one piece of toast instead of two pieces of toast, it makes a big difference over the lifetime. So if 20,000 breaths a day, uh, how do we get started with that? That seems like a really big task. Well, uh, in the book that I wrote, which was primarily for athletes, uh, but, you know, it applies and I'll write a corporate book one day. <laughs> But the, the path, the book, the book is uh, called Elite Breathing, and it's specifically designed to tell people how to train their breathing. And the first zone is awareness. No surprise there. If you don't know, you, how, how are you going to shift it? The second zone is nose breathing. If you can't be aware and you can't breathe through your nose primarily, then you're going to be breathing through your mouth. Mouth breathing instantly changes the, the function of your breath, makes it shallow, makes it tight makes it heavy, makes it noisy. There's no way to go from there. You've got to improve the nose. You've got to move, improve the awareness. Then we can get into some exercises. Then we can actually start to feel the breath become lighter, softer, deeper, more gentle. And there's exercises that you can do. These are exercises that you can incorporate very easily throughout your day. This isn't about taking 30 minutes in the morning or whatever. Uh, you can be doing this on the bike, on the elliptical, you can be doing it on the treadmill, you can be doing this on your walk with the dog, with the kids in the park as you're watching. You can be doing nose slow and low breathing at any time. Functional breathing can become part of your everyday life. Even when you're sitting typing at the computer, you're noticing your breathing. 
is it becoming different as you're typing that angry email? Is it becoming, is your, is your posture changing and your breath changing at the same time? So awareness, nose breathing, and then bring high quality into it with simple exercises that allows you to feel the difference. When you notice that your diaphragm is working optimally, then you feel the difference, you know for sure. So those are the, those are the early steps that you can take. And then of course, with athletes, I go a little bit above and beyond that, much more um, biological and physiological experiences that they're looking to optimize every ounce of oxygen that they have in their body. How did you get started in this realm? Because it, it seems like you've got a good background in, in uh, you know, mindfulness. Uh, you're incorporating breath. Tell me about what was the pathway to get here for uh, breath work for professional athletes? It was incredible, actually, because um, at the age of 32, I had a back spasm in the middle of Times Square and I fell to my knees and I walked like an 80 year old man back to my apartment, which was two blocks away. And I laid on my floor for three days, unable to move or stand up. And I realized at the age of 32, something was wrong. And I realized that I had processed the world in a very dysfunctional way for all those years when I played golf, when I was super competitive, that I wanted the best of myself. And I pushed myself in weight training and running and ran a marathon when I was 26 years old. And I did it all. And I wanted to take on the world in New York City and so it took a long time to figure out what the heck was wrong. And ultimately my breathing became the key to finding function in my body, function in my movement, function with my breath. So I became an optimal human being that could hold myself upright, proudly and happily. And so this journey has been so amazing. I've been blessed with great teachers, meditative teachers, teachers, yoga teachers, um, massage therapists, all the, all the people that allows you to, to learn about yourself. And ultimately, I'm just a lifelong learner and I'm a, a passionate teacher and coach. And uh, so it was, a, it was always a natural fit. As I got better at my health, I wanted to help other people uh, not be in that pain. That's incredible. And so, it's, you know, athletes have these injuries and you're saying that the that, that breath work can help them work out of it along with other things. That's that's really cool. Um, is there is there like a a short condensed version, like a, a two second version that a listener to this podcast, I know it's a two second, let's, let's put some more stress on somebody to do two <laughs> seconds of breath work. Um, but is there, is there a, a condensed version that somebody listening to this podcast can incorporate and say, huh, that actually did make a difference right now? Well, I think the easy thing is to put your hands on your lower ribs and close your mouth and breathe nose slow and low. I think as you're walking through your day, realizing that you can deepen the experience of your breathing, lessen the upper chest, deepen it down into the lower part, slow it down and make it nose breathing, that makes a world of difference. Now, that's just the entry of, you haven't really gone through the big pearly gates and you haven't really walked through the, the major part of the experience. But if you can start to optimize the efficiency of your breathing, so it's not shallow, it's not heavy, it's not loud, it's not mouth, and you can start to make it softer, quieter, and more gentle, you're really on the way to something special. Just to give your listeners a little preview, where we go with this is making your breathing lighter. And by lighter, I mean so that you can't even see that you're breathing. So when you are learning how to breathe more effortlessly and more effectively, Literally, the wave that you create in your breathing is very soft, very gentle, very subtle. That's very hard to do for those who are over breathing. Those who are highly stressed and highly engaged, their muscles are engaged, their breath is engaged, they're very physically active, they're very into the world, right? These, it's very hard to bring it down. It's very hard to bring it soft. It's very hard to be gentle. It's great to be energized in the world, but you have to find a balance. You can't always be energized. You can't always be leaning into life. You need to relax a little bit, downregulate, and the softer, gentler breath does that. There's obviously some scientific efficacy for this, right? Because every parent knows you go through the Lamaze classes, you both learn how to do the like targeted, the specific breath patterns. And so... Uh, t talk to me about some of the efficacy that you're seeing through this work. Well, the biggest thing to share with uh, your listeners is functional movement and functional breathing. It's the thing that I talk about with my athletes first and foremost, as I learned the hard way, uh, playing obsessive golf for so many years and having a dysfunctional lower back, 
Um, I didn't have functional breathing with my functional movement. So function, you can't have one without the other. You need the functional breath to lead with functional movement. We are active human beings, especially in Colorado. We're all running around doing the great hiking and biking and, and running and, and, and all that. So it's important to um, know that your breathing does affect the way you move your body. And if your listeners are having any lower back pain, which a lot of people do, you can, you can point to the breath as being a part of that experience. It may not be the only part that needs to be fixed, but I would say that if your doctor or your therapist isn't referring to your breathing, you're missing a major component of who you are and what you can do to help heal. And I would say when it comes to trauma, um, physical trauma, mental trauma, breathing in, again becomes another pathway to optimize your health, to optimize your recovery. Where can we find out more about you and your business? And more importantly, where can we find your book so that we can start reading about how we're all breathing wrong? <laughs> uh, well, let's, let's be humble first. Uh, we all learn, you know, in our own time and place. Um, so josamodi.com is where uh, the home is for me right now. Uh, that's where you can find the book. Uh, but let me tease your audience that I have lots of hopes that in about two years time, I'll have opened a breathing clinic here in Fort Collins. Hmm. So um, that's the ultimate goal um, to serve the larger population. Um, but I started with athletes because it was a, a passion project for me to, to work with athletes. So uh, if you have a daughter or son, uh, high school, college, I'm ready, uh, happy to, to serve their, their, um, their training needs. Well, Joe, thank you so much for joining us today and for uh, walking us through a, a brief exercise on how to improve our breath. And hopefully we can all learn to do that better because there's no end of the stress that's coming down the pipeline. Uh, and there's only so much we can outsource to chat GPT. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, Just remember, no slow and low, no slow and low. Nose slow and low. Slow and I, low. I love it. For more great entrepreneurial advice for entrepreneurs in and around our community, keep listening to the Founded in Foco podcast, uh, wherever podcasts can be found. And uh, come see us again in March 2024. Can't wait to see you there. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm Nick Armstrong, and this is a Founded in Foco podcast. For more great interviews like this one, join us at foundedinfoco.com.